So joining me now is, is Nick Hilraj. So he's the business lead retail media at Molico. Um, we're going to talk about kind of machine learning in retail media. Um, and I want to start with a bit of your background, okay. if that's the case. So do you, want to, do you want to start with kind of a brief journey, a brief, a brief description of your journey into the retail media space, um, some key milestones, some experiences? Yeah. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm very new to Moloko. Moloko is uh, a way to say MLCO, or machine learning company. We're, uh, we've been around 10 years, and I joined them a few months ago, and I'm shocked that they found this picture. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably because they don't have a picture of mine at, at the office because I'm so new here. I'm wearing the same outfit. It's nice. yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so, uh, so machine learning company, Moloko, that's kind of the genesis of the company. We have a couple of products. One of them is a retail media platform that we bring to marketplaces and retailers. But I started my journey in retail media about 12, 13 years ago. I played a small part in the start of, at the beginning of Walmart's uh, advertising business called Walmart Connect today. Yeah. I believe they still use some of the stuff we built early on in 2011. They bought my startup. We started this thing called Walmart Labs. And then there we, we incubated the retail media business. And then I joined Bain & Company after Walmart, spent uh, four years there as a partner in the San Francisco office and helped Bain build up their retail media advisory practice around the world. Yes, yeah, so I actually want to my... talk about that in a bit more detail. So you were, you were a partner at Bain and Company, yep. uh, and you actually led that whole kind of glo global retail media That's practice. Right. Yeah. So do you want to share some insights into some of the key challenges and opportunities then? Yeah, so look, at, at the end of the day, the, um, what, what happened during COVID was e-commerce exploded, yeah. and everybody moved from um, on, uh, in-store to online shopping. And when they did that online shopping, you got to deliver the product last mile to the customer. And that makes e-commerce inherently less profitable than, than retail. So all of my clients at Bain were interested to figure out how to plug that hole in the profit, how, what can we do to sort of make the P&L whole again. And the number one approach is retail media. That's where you get a pretty significant revenue and margin stream that, that creates sort of that uh, profit pool, if you will. Right. And that's, uh, that was the biggest challenge around the world. Interesting. And then so what about kind of the time at Walmart Labs as well? Because I know you, you played kind of a big role in founding that kind of retail, mis <laughs> retail media business. So any kind of insights into that, into kind of what uh, led look, to success? Yes, the same thing. That's what made me join Maloko. What I heard from advertisers uh, when we started, what's called, it, was, it was called WMX at that time. Now it's called Walmart Connect. What everybody asked me about WMX was, you have all this data. How can you use it to make advertising more effective, more targeted, more relevant? And when I was doing the work at Bain, I got the same question from all retailers. All these, all of my, my retail customers have this data. How can they use it to, to deliver performance? So it, it really wasn't solved. The problem that I heard from Procter & Gamble in 2011, the same problem was still happening. So when I, uh, I think the, that's been the sort of the challenge throughout. How do these retailers leverage their data to deliver a performance for their advertisers, and that's kind of the same thing okay. that Muller was trying to solve. That's why I'm, I joined so, the company. Yeah. Just got one final background question because yeah. there's four floors here. If you guys, if no one's seen, I mean, I'm still getting lost. But there's an F1 car. There's a McLaren <laughs> F1 car in the lobby. Um, none of you might know, but Nikhil actually, he started as an aerodynamic engineer at Jaguar F1 team, and yeah. I want to see what that connection is between kind of your engineering influence and kind of the challenges in the retail media space. You know, the way we stuck those ads on those cars. <laughs> to make them go faster, <laughs> that's the connection between retail media and F1. Uh, right? That those those ads somehow made the cars go faster. Okay, so we need to take off all the ads that's of right. the Red Bull team. So there's some competition this it year. It creates all the turbulence. Of <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Great. Okay. Well, let's let's jump into it more because because time's going by. But um, so, can you explain how machine learning is reshaping the retail media flywheel, starting with its impact on users, and how does it make ads more relevant to users in real time? Yeah. So, good question. Um, I think my, my team must have seeded you with these questions. <laughs> so the, the, the thing about users is their, their preference is changing all the time. They're touching a retailer from all different angles, from different websites, from everywhere else. So you, you kind of have to be, you got, you got to keep up with the users, basically. So if you have a platform that uses user segments, they bought something half a, half a year ago or three months ago, and they're now in the market for something else, you really are missing the point. Yeah. The, the world is pretty real time right now. So with respect to users and machine learning and relevance, you've got to be able to respond in real time. Like what, what, imagine if you went into your Facebook or your TikTok feed and you had something from six weeks ago or six, six months ago. It really doesn't matter. You're, you're going to log off. It's the same case with retail media. Yeah. When, when you're on a retailer website, you're going to want to see what's, or just in general, e-commerce, not just media. You're going to want to see what's relevant to you right now. 
Yeah. And so you got to make that decision real time. Yeah. And that's kind of how this thing becomes relevant for users real time. Great. Right? Well, let, let's, let's talk about an example of that then. People love to hear kind of real life examples. So can you walk us through a real life example where machine learning significantly improved user satisfaction and the effectiveness of ads on a retail or marketplace platform? Yeah, so we're sort of transitioning between relevance to users and advertising. Just as important as it is for the content to be relevant, it's also important for ads to be relevant. And it's effectively the same underlying backend, if you will, that enables that. So. For example, if you're on in market for a laptop, or, or you know, one one of my favorite examples we've seen with a real customer is a is jeans. Like all of, at least to me, as a, not a big connoisseur of apparel, all the jeans look the same to me. So we so we had a customer, uh, apparel customer who had, I think seven pairs of jeans. Once you pick the, you know, the men of this size of this style, like basically there were seven pairs, and. I was like, there's no way this is going to make any difference to the user. But I don't know how, this is like deep learning. It's kind of a big part of Moloko's technology is deep learning. We don't really sort of control the algorithms. They self-learn. So what it came up with is a different order of the same seven pairs of genes for different users on the website. So when it does that, somehow it figures out, based on your browsing and searching, what types of images you click on, it figures out what is the right, set, right pair of genes for you. Right. And so it reorders the seven, so we were able to double the click-through rate for this customer, and therefore the ad revenue doubles, right? So the, the value, so when you, when you think about advertising, it's revenue. Yeah. So every impression you put in front of the user has to generate the maximum ad revenue for the retailer or the marketplace. Yeah. If you don't do that, that, it's like a jar of milk that went bad, it goes bad in three seconds. So if you don't put the right ad in front of the user, the revenue of the platform falls. Yeah. So putting that right genes in front of the user was incredibly important. So the user relevance, seven pairs of blue genes, that's absolutely looks different to each user. I don't know how, maybe the angle is different, or the, of course the price. But somehow the machine figures it out. Yeah. And you reorder these things, you get a higher click-through rate, you get higher revenue, you get higher user relevance, you get higher revenue for Brilliant. the platform. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, let, let's stay focused talking about advertisers yeah. then. So how does machine learning help in meeting their objectives? especially when it comes to optimizing the auction and ad decision-making process. Yeah, so advertisers is a whole other situation, right? So if you have uh, a product from a certain advertiser and maybe there are two, three products from two, three advertisers, they're all relevant to the user, right? Yeah. So first, we just talked about how we determine what's the right one for the user by making sure that the relevance is very high. But at the same time, you gotta give the advertiser the return. So we talked about performance earlier. How do you use your data to make the ad most performant for the for the advertisers. So they have a certain budget that's looking to hit a certain return on that budget. So if you show the, the uh, user an ad that's not relevant, they're not gonna click and buy. Yeah. So it reduces the revenue for everybody. For the advertiser, they don't sell that product. For the user, they sort of get into an ad blindness situation. And for the platform, there's no ad revenue. So for the advertiser, it's really important that for a given user, there's a, real, a certain item, you gotta match the two. Mm. And then when you do that, the, the advertiser's goals are met. Yeah. So for example, if I'm trying to reach a bunch of users and my goal is cost per reach, and there's another advertiser who's trying to reach, uh, to try to sell something, his, his goal might be target ROAS. So if you have to figure out how to normalize these two goals into one, figure out what to show the user, whether this advertiser wins with the reach goal or that advertiser wins with a performance goal and make sure that both of them uh, are sort of taken into account in the auction to help deliver the right ad to the user. Brilliant. So all of that stuff sort of has to happen in real time. Yeah, yeah so um, let's talk about automation quickly then, mm -hmm. talking about that. So automation is a key aspect in retail media platforms. Yeah. How do automations dri driven by machine learning impact the profitability of these platforms? Yeah. And what are the benefits for retailers and marketplaces? Yeah, so I don't know if I heard, saw some hands, show of hands on, on retail media here. When t the typical journey in uh, retail media the last 15, 20 years has been, yeah, you, you, you find, um, you want an item to sell, you get a bunch of keywords, you go and put all those keywords in the retail media platform, and then you gotta go set bids for each of those keywords, you do that. On, everybody's been trained by Google search for 20 years to do that. But when you think about a retailer or a marketplace, lots and lots of sellers really don't have that ad advertising understanding. They're not sophisticated advertisers. Yeah. So you got to abstract away all of that uh, to the user. So at Moloko, we have a term called operational machine learning, which means how do you make the operations 
of any business get automated with machine learning. That's where the automation comes in. So can we figure out the keywords automatically? Just give me the item you want to sell. Yeah. Tell me how much you want to bid on or, or budget you want to spend. I'll figure out the keywords. I'll figure out the bids. I'll figure out where to show it. I'll figure out when to show it. I'll figure out how fast to spend your budget, day parting, this and that and the other. All of those decisions are made by the machine. So what it does is some of our customers are running multi-hundred million dollar ad businesses with four people, five people. Because you really don't need anybody to go in there and say, oh, I'm going to pick all these keywords, then I'm going to put all these bids, then I'm going to figure out the budget, I'm going to figure out the ad copy. The gentleman before me was talking about ad copy, right? Yeah. Using ChatGB to generate. So it's, it's all of these things that operational machine learning enables automation. So ad sales people don't have to go out there and grab budgets every, every month. Yeah. The, because you're delivering the performance, the, the, the advertiser is constantly going on adding budget, which is like sometimes they go uncapped which is they don't have a budget goal. They're like, just keep selling my stuff with ads as long as it delivers a certain level of return. Yeah. And they just check the boxes, they just go. Yeah. So all of this is, makes operations really, really easy and makes it all automated. So operational machine learning drives automation. That's kind of a term we've co coined at Maloko and we're trying to sort of, it, it's not easy to do. Our machine learning platform, the guy who built Google's ML platform called Sybil for 15, 16 years, our chief ML officer, and the guy who built Google's shopping ads for the last 10 years is the head of engineering for retail media for Moloko. So these two guys have figured out how to make this thing work at large scale inside Google and every Google ad product was using Sybil. Yeah. So now that same platform has now been pulled out of Google, like these guys have rebuilt it at Moloko and now making it available for everybody else. If so if yeah. Google or Amazon can build an ads business with high performance, everybody else should be able to. Yeah. And these are some of the underlying, automation is the underlying principle. How do you get millions of advertisers by billions of keywords on Google, well, they don't anymore. This thing called Performance Max that they released recently, same thing is being built at Moloko. So this automation, operational ML is about reducing the work that someone has to do to build an ad business. Yeah. And that's all the stuff that I just mentioned and hundreds of other things that the machine just takes care of. And that's how ML automation retail media works. Yes, so let's talk about kind of sustainable value. So to create kind of sustainable value, you mentioned three key areas then. Yep. So user experience, advertising success, yep. and retail slash marketplace optimization. Yep. How do these elements work together to power the flywheel and deliver long-term value then? <clears throat> See, the, um, lo long-term value, you have to be relevant to the cons consumer. Yeah. You have to be relevant to the consumer. That's long-term value. Right? Again, people who've been here for a while in the performance marketing industry, there's a thing in Google called quality score, Google search. How good is your ad mm -hmm. to the user basically is considered in the auction as it continues over time. So if people click on your ad, go to a website and come right back, Google will know that. Yeah. And they cut your quality. Yeah. Similarly, if you're not showing the right ad as a retailer, you're gonna have the same, deliver the same bad experience for the user. So long-term value comes by delivering what's relevant to the user and keeping that relevance high over time so the user keeps coming back and clicking on those ads. Like Amazon's ad density right now is in incredibly high. I don't know if, it, I'm sure many people here use Amazon. Almost every other thing, in between everything, there's lots of ads everywhere. And they're still managing to push the, push the commerce business up and the ads business up. How does that happen? It happens because the thing is relevant short term, long term. So you gotta keep the user at the center of it. And as long as you're relevant to the user and your ad, and your ad machine, your ad engine considers that, short term, long term is gonna be really Valuable to the to the company. Perfect. I've just seen the clock, and we're down to the final yeah. thirty seconds. Yeah. I do want to end on kind of that same question as as the last one. So, for for the audience here, if there was one key takeaway to take away from this interview that you want them to leave with, what would it be? Yeah. What what I would say is that building an advertising business with retail media is not easy. It's a business that is completely counter to a retailer or a marketplace. They're used to selling to consumers. Uh, the, sort of buying from advertisers or suppliers, selling to consumers. It's a B2C uh, business with a very thin margin, with very little operational setup. But when you do a retail media business, you're now becoming a B2B company. You're now calling on your suppliers are now your customers. You are now trying to build a high margin business with a ton of customer support, with an incredible amount of operational sort of investment in making that business work. Yeah. None of these things are, are sort of your DNA as a retailer or a marketer. You just don't know how to do this. So in order to do it well, you need 
not only a bunch of capability on the sort of the people and process side, you need a bunch of technology to enable them to do it well. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of the what I would leave. And there's, there's not a lot of hands up in this room about retailers and marketplaces, but this is a new capability everybody's building. And you're going to have to sort of invest and build in this capability as you build a retail media business. That's what I would leave the, for the room to. Fantastic. Take well, thank you very much, Nikhil, for your time. Yeah, thank you.